You played a game for years, have a 5 star island, completed most of your goals, got all of your dream villagers, and now you don't even want to start a game anymore, asking yourself, what is there even left to do? Tom Nook certainly doesn't help with this, so let me help you. I'll show you more than 50 things that you can do every single day and why you should do them in Animal Crossing so that you can enjoy the game again. Without further ado, let's start. First thing I do when I start up the game is to check my mailbox, because if I don't do it then, I will probably forget it. You should check your mailbox to look for ordered items, villager letters and presents. And once a month you also get a gift from your mom, which is an exclusive item you cannot get anywhere else. Don't forget to favorite your favorite letters so that they won't get deleted once you have more than 300 letters in your mailbox. After that, I take a walk around my beaches. I do this to look for the battle and to get the daily DIY recipe. And to also look for gyro fragments. Because if you don't pick them up, they will just stay there. They're not like shells. Picking up the battle is great to complete your DIY selection. Even if you already have the recipe, you can still keep it and trade it on Nookazon or with friends. After that, I take a look at Nook's cranny to see what they have. It's fun to look at the displayed items, see if there's anything that you don't have already or any color combination that you haven't thought about. But I also check the items in the cabinet every time to see what kind of tools they have today. I love the elephant watering can. I also love that shovel design. And I usually get about 10 gift wraps so I can wrap the gifts for my villagers for later. Also look at the umbrellas, they are super collectible. And if you want one of each, the only way to get them is by checking the section. I like to buy them and give them to villagers. Also, don't forget the section with the wallpapers and the floors. There is often a hidden treasure there. Even though you won't find the exclusive ones that you can get from Sahara, it's still a good idea to check them out daily. So, once I'm done with Nook's Cranny, I usually go to Able Sisters. I check out the displayed items, I look at how the models were designed, and I go into the changing room. I also talk to Sable every single day. I know after you get the designs you don't really have to, but she has nice seasonal dialogue and I just like checking in with her. So once I'm in the changing room, I see if there's anything new that I don't have yet or other color options. And I usually buy some things, not just for myself. Sometimes I'm like, oh, that would look awesome on a villager. So then I buy that for them. Another thing to keep in mind is to look at the daily Nook Mile plus goals. By completing them you can get a lot of Nook Miles on the side, which lead to Nook Mile tickets, so you can hunt more. Then if I found something at Able Sisters, I do like to change my outfit. I try to combine different things to look what colors match. This is nice to use all of your clothes, to discover new styles and just for fun really. Another thing you can do is check all of your trees, cut wood to get the different types of wood, but to also get a free item every day to catch wasps, which sell for quite a lot of bells. Next we have the rocks. Here I have a rock garden. If you hit the rocks, you will eventually find the money rock. You can get resources and a golden nugget. Then I just take a walk around my island. I pick up any weeds that have grown from the day before. I pick up any branches. I personally don't like what the weeds look like when they grow taller, that's why I pick them up and I don't want them to impact my island rating. And I pick up the branches because yeah, I don't like what they look like necessarily. And I do use them for crafting, you use them for crafting a lot of tools or other items, so I usually just pick them up and if I don't use them then just put them in my storage to use for later. Then I go to resident services, I am looking at the recycling bin quite often to see if there's anything that I would like to have. Like every time when a villager moves out you will get something new in the recycle bin and you can see if you want it. There are also exclusive items which you can only find in the recycle bin, so it's always a good idea to look in there. And the, the rusted parts are also hard to get, but I think you can only use them to build that giant robot, which I'm not interested in, but uh, good to know that they are there. Then you can go to check nook stuff for free miles. You get more free miles every day the more you visit Nook Stop in a row. And then I usually check Nook Shopping for seasonal items. And Nook Shopping does have a daily selection of different items. I like to go through them. You also have a different KK album each day on the last place. And yeah, the seasonal item. I always check the seasonal items every day because they are exclusive items. You can't reorder them. And so I am trying to stay on top of them if there are a lot of different items and you can only order five a day. That's why I always check it every day. Then while I'm walking around my island, I'm also looking for a visiting NPC. Isabel doesn't always say if there's someone visiting, so I usually check if Red Boat is on the map or if other NPCs are wandering around or if Gulliver is on the beach. 
Then if you're in the business for breeding flowers, you can also check your flowers, which I do every day. I'm keeping my flower bed clean and I water my flowers. And even if you're not breeding flowers, you can still see if anything is overgrown with your flowers. Then I take out my net and catch some bugs so I can donate them to the museum if I haven't already to finish my bug collection. Or usually I just sell them to get some extra belts. Same thing with fish, you can fish to sell or to donate. Then when you get on a diving suit you can also catch sea creatures as well to sell or to donate. And another point, I always catch sea creatures until I have a scallop so I can give it to Pascal. You want to do this so you can get mermaid DIYs, mermaid clothes or just pearls. Once you get everything you just get a pearl every day. But pearls are still valuable for crafting and also for trading on Nukazon. And the thing that I find the most fun about it is actually the funny message that Pascal gives when he's trading you the scallop. I look forward to that all the time, every day. Next you can look for buried fossils or gyroids. You can get the fossils assessed and donate them or use them for decoration. You can also give them to villagers, which is what I do mostly, or just sell them if you need belts. Then as I said, you can assess the fossils with bladders, which is great for donation or to increase their value so that you can give them to villagers for more friendship points or just sell them, get more belts. After that we can go up the stairs to Brewster's and get a coffee. This is great to see NPCs, have some unique dialogue or just enjoy a relaxing cup of coffee. You can also get a coffee to go but that's a hundred belts more expensive. I like to look around the interior. I think it's so relaxing and nicely designed and there's just always something to see. After that I usually look around who's crafting. So I look around all of my villager homes and see who has a light on. Then I go inside, see if they're crafting, get the DIY recipe. And this is also great to do to see if someone is sick. Because when they are sick they won't leave the house all day. You can bring them some medicine and that's an easy way to get a favor completed. And why would you do that? Because of the Nook Marigolds. Then while I am looking for who's crafting, I'm also talking to my villagers. That's fun to see what they have to say each day. You get friendship points. You may be asked a favor, like can you bring this to the other villager? It's also a great opportunity to check them for fleas. Fleas can be donated to the museum. You can make a flea model, which I wouldn't necessarily recommend. They look kind of creepy. And there's also Nook My Goal, where you have to catch fleas. While I'm talking to them, I'm also giving each villager a gift. Usually the fossils that were just assessed by bladders. But I also like to give them clothes and uh, you can also give them a door decoration if you don't want to redecorate the whole home and you just want them to have another door decoration, just gift it to them and they will put it on their doors. Another fun thing you can do is hunt for balloons. You can get clothes, money, DIYs or items and it's just relaxing to look for them and it's also fun to see what you get in each present. Another thing you can do daily is do group stretching. For real, it's good for you. I know I don't do it all the time. I often do it with the buttons now, but I'm trying because I know I really feel better if I do it. Like if you're sitting a lot, if you're playing a lot, then it's definitely worth it. And it's a fun way to see if an NPC is visiting because they will usually just stretch with you. And just looking at them, there are funny reactions. And I love how Nintendo made it that not everybody's in sync. So even if you're a little behind, you don't feel bad about it because Raymond is also behind. Another thing you can do daily is check back after 7 pm to look for shooting stars or Celeste to get a new DIY. You will always get a new DIY recipe from Celeste and if there are no DIYs left then you will get star fragments from her. And even if you can't find Celeste you can still find some shooting stars which will give you star fragments the next morning. Another thing you can do daily is change your interior. This is nice to free up your storage space, to refresh your home, to maybe seasonally update your home interior. But don't stay in the main room because if villagers are visiting there is no escaping them. Next I like to work on my island design. Usually just little by little so I don't get overwhelmed. This includes terraforming, decorating and also removing overgrown flowers or weeds. Another thing you can do is change your infrastructure with Tom Nook. You can build, demolish bridges or inclines. You can also move shops or villager homes. When I'm redecorating an area I usually just move their home to the beach. An underrated feature that you can do every day is write letters. The nice thing here is that there are seasonal letter designs. Also you can get letters back and there is a Nook Mile goal attached to it. If you don't know what to write, just tell them how happy you are that they are there or how lucky you are that they are your friend. Just write something nice. It doesn't have to be that deep and it doesn't have to be that long. Just a sentence is enough usually and you will get such nice responses back, believe me, it's totally worth it.
worth it. Another thing you can do daily is look for custom content. I don't do this every day, but I do this quite regularly where I look if I actually use all of my custom content. I like to rearrange my custom content to free up space. And sometimes I just download a lot of custom content to see which ones I will actually use. And if I don't use them, I just delete them after that. Something else you should do every day is visit Captain's Island to get extra resources or resources from another season. This time we got glowing moss. Not that exciting because of Happy Home Paradise, but still nice. And now we're going over to Harz Island. Today is a Monday, so we do get a restock for almost every stall, which is quite exciting. So I usually do start on the right, because I'm all about the shoes and the bags, which you cannot get on Able Sisters usually. So I'm checking Kik's inventory and seeing if there's anything that I don't have yet or any color variant that I would like to have. After that I'm going right over to Red's. I look at his art and see if there's anything that I don't have yet or if anything that is real or can just use it for decoration on my island. But Red also has his little raffle box which I sometimes get tickets for because you can get donuts, ice cream and soda cans which is also nice for decoration and you can also hold it and eat it if you want. And we got a white chocolate donut. So next in line we have Leaf and I do like to talk to him because he always says what is in bloom right now. And I like to stock up on my seeds. I usually have 10 seeds of each in my storage but sometimes I have to restock them. So I'm checking out if Leaf has them or if they are at Nook's Cranny. After that, instead of going to Cyrus, I go straight to Sahara because her items are just more exciting. So I can't wait to see what rugs she has and what, what wallpaper she's carrying. The Blue Moroccan style wall, I'm pretty sure I don't have that yet, so I'm gonna get it. I would say that my favorite sellers are actually Kix and Sahara, just because of their item selection. Then I go to Katrina. I do actually really like her. I like getting your luck predicted, but I like more when you have bad luck and then you can pay her and get an exclusive item in the mail the next day. That's my favorite. And also bumping up your friendship points is another good point. The downside is that her spells do take quite a long time, so sometimes I just don't have the patience to sit there and wait until she says her spell casting. So after that I'm going to Cyrus usually if I have some items that I want to redesign. Right now I have a store shelf that I got from a balloon earlier and I just want to change the wood color and the displayed items. Sometimes I'm just going to him to see what the items could look like and I'm so sad that Reese is just standing there not doing anything. I wish he would customize clothes, that would be perfect. The good thing about Cyrus is that he can also customize things that you cannot customize with a customization kit. Then I go to Tortima and I usually go there to unload my pockets so I can have empty your pockets when I'm going to the next destination. And I also do really like to use the photo studio that Harv set up. It's great to create some custom areas, but the main reason why I use it and why I like it is because I can test outfits on villagers before I give them to the villager, which is quite handy. Something else that I like to do every day is to check out the Happy Home Paradise Island. I know you can only do that if you have the DLC, but if you don't have it, you should definitely get it. If you're watching this video right now, if you want to get some inspiration of what to do, you need to get a DLC. It's totally worth it. So when I'm there, first I take a walk around the beach just like my island and look for the daily bottle there. Often it is a glowing moss recipe but not always. Just last, I think in the last month I found actually a new recipe that I haven't known yet. So I still check it every day. Then I like to take a look at the cafe because I have my two hamsters working there and the meal items are actually great for decoration. The luncheon one is my absolute favorite. I love to put it on picnic blankets or just on tables outside or inside. It's the perfect breakfast item. You can also get a daily cooking recipe when you go to the restaurant. I don't do that at often anymore because I have all of my cooking recipes completed, but I did do it absolutely every day when I was still looking for recipes. Next you can check out the daily clothing selection. It does change every day and you can set a style for the clothes that you want to see. I usually prefer the cute clothes. Most of the time I'm not actually getting something for myself here, but getting something for my villagers. Because if you buy something here, you will get it directly into your pocket. While when you're in the changing room at Able Sisters, it will just get transferred to your storage, which is not that practical for gifting it to villagers. You can also get exclusive clothing items here when KK performs. Something else you can get daily is your daily plumera sapling from the teacher in the school. Even if you don't want to keep it, you can just get them and collect them and then trade them on Okazon. 
it's still nice to just check in with the school. And since it is Monday today, I'm also taking the opportunity to look at the doctor's office to get some extra turnips from Joanne. She's visiting every Monday for her weekly doctor's appointment. But if it's not Monday, you can still go there and have a little appointment and get a free item. Like a head bandage, not the best item, but it's something. So after visiting every building, then I go to the office. Like in Nook's Cranny, you do get new items here every day. And even if you don't want any of them, you can also talk to Wardell to go directly in the store and order something. I also like to work on some paradise homes. I usually just do one or two a day. Sometimes I'm not doing any and then I'm doing three the next day. That's just for fun, to get all of my villagers, to get a better rank and to make more pokey. The higher your rank is, the more pokey you make. And in the long run, I do want to have that legendary rank and get the most pokey. When you do have the DLC, then you can also go to your own island and redecorate your villager's interiors. I do that all the time, because when I have a villager where I know I want to have that villager for a long period of time, maybe forever, then I'm always updating their homes. You can just make it nicer, make it cozier, but you can also put a shop inside their home, so it looks like they're working something. You can give them something to do, and it's so much fun. And there you have it, more than 50 things that you can do every single day. I kept the explanation short, because I think the most players just need a little reminder from time to time. If you have questions to any tasks, write me a comment and I will try to help as best as I can. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and have a nice day. Bye.